It's your girl, Angel Yasmin, and I am so, so excited to be here. I feel right at home. First off, I got to give my credit to God because, man, he rocks. Without him, I would not be here today. I just want to say thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me this awesome platform to do what I know you've called me to do, and that's to run my mouth, baby, (laughs) and do it to the glory of God. So listen, I also want to give a big, huge thank you to IBNXRadio.com because you know what? They took me in like family. They thank you for trusting me with your platform. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. And also for my supporters, my husband, my family, my mom and dad who instilled and enriched great values inside of me. And you know what, guys? I just feel right at home. Everything that has happened since January, starting with Fire to Inspire, it's happened on time. So let's go ahead and fire away. Today's quote is, God has shaken you to awaken you. Now, if you're watching live, you got to stay with me. You don't want to miss this powerful message because over the couple of weeks, God has downloaded so much in my spirit. I have no idea where to even really start. When I was like putting my plans together, I was like, oh man, where do I even start? Like, what can I do? I want to introduce you to a very special guest of mine. She's a dear friend and also a sister, a spiritual sister, also a sister in my family because she's been in my family for years now and she's an asset to my family. I mean, she started out as a best friend with my parents and just, you know, praying the walls down in our church back in the day when the Holy Ghost was real. You know what I'm talking about? (laughs) Can we get back to that? Okay. But look. I want to introduce you. Her name is Prophetess Sherry Shaw, also known as the Wife Coach. But we're going to talk about that another day because we need that power on the inside of you today. We're going to talk about it another day. So who is definitely a woman of fire and a powerful woman of God, spiritual leader, philanthropist, humanitarian, a wife and a mother. She serves as a pastor alongside of her own husband, Andre Shaw. God has gifted this woman of fire with the gift of prophecy, healing, marriage and ministry, interpretations of dreams, and she's a visionary. So let's welcome prophetess Sherry Shaw. What's up, lady? Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the invitation. I'm just blessed to be here. I didn't know any other way I wanted to start this party off. Awesome. You know, I had so many other people lined up in my head, but the I woke up one day and he said, I need you to call Sherry. And it was recently, y'all. It was like, like what, a, a week ago? A week and I was ago. like, look, let's do this. And it's been on, it, on fire <laughs> what? from the phone call. Come on now. God we were sitting on so the phone. Amazing. Ain't it? Oh. Man, we were sitting on the phone. Ain't it? Ain't it? Oh, my gosh. You know, this is not an ordinary minister. I have to say this. She is so full of fire. She's so fun. And she's a person that has a huge heart that I think a lot of people don't give her enough credit for. But, you know, if you're watching this show and if you have any malice towards anybody in this building, I want you to say to yourself, this is not about us. We're removing ego. I even told, you know, Pastor Sherry, I said, listen. I'm younger than her, but I said, look, we're not getting on this show about us. We're doing what God has called us to do and to build his kingdom because a lot of people, we're in a state of an emergency, y'all. The reason why God called me to do this show today, to really wake people up because the enemy is coming in like a flood. The first question I want to ask you, Prophet, when were you called to the game? When were you spiritually awakened? Today, that's what we're talking about. Right. It was about 25 years ago. I've been in church as you all my life. Both sides of my family were church leaders, church officials. So I've been in church all my life. But to really say that when I really gave my life to God and and sought him for my purpose right. was about 26 years ago because I've been in ministry almost 25 years now. So about 26, 27 years ago. And one morning I had two children at this time. I woke up. I just felt a leading to seek God for my purpose because there comes a point in a time when you want to know God why am I here right. what did you create me Come for on. and I got up about four three or four that morning and I got on my knees and I said you know God what's my purpose what do you Ooh, want man. me to do what is it that I'm to do and I prayed and I didn't get an answer right away it was After I prayed and got back in bed and I wasn't like sound asleep, but I was asleep Uh and the Lord came to me in a, in a vision, in a dream and said, I want you to preach and teach. And I said, okay, God, you want me to get in a pulpit? How do you want me to do this? He Mm -hmm. said, it'll come. Okay. He said, but I want you to preach and teach. 
And I said, you know, God, I love you so much. And he said, I love you too. And my next question was, well, why haven't we talked like this before? Mm. And he said, I tried, but you wouldn't listen. Oh, come And on. that come on. was my awakening because I'm like, God, you've been trying to talk to me. And, you, and I wasn't listening. I wasn't paying attention. So I never wanted that to happen again. I always wanted to be able to hear God's voice. Mm-hmm. And so I began from that moment to develop a he- ear to hear when the spirit of God was speaking to me. Yes. And that was my awakening. Wow. You know, even in my sleep, ooh, that was my man. awakening. I mean, won't he just come on to oh, and just will. be like, when you're sincere, ooh, there you when go. you're sincere from your heart and there you, you really are seeking to know what, why, why did you create me? What, what am I here for? Right. And it, let me tell you, it's, it hasn't been easy. There mm-hmm. have been major trials, tests, and tribulations. Come on. There have been some knockdown, <laughs> drag out fights between <laughs> me and some human people yes. and me and yes. Come you know, on. some spiritual forces that were trying to block me. Right. But I refuse to give up and I refuse to let go of God. And when I got that revelation, I said, okay, God, if I can't be real, with this thing, mm. then I don't want to do it because I believe in transparency Ooh. and you can't tell somebody about something. How, how will people fully understand if they look at the church and think that it's all perfect and, oh, you know, right. like, you know, you don't have any challenges, Ooh. you don't have any tests or trials and going through those things, those are called stirrings and shaking in the spirit, which causes you to awake. Come on. Even more yes. from the state of sleep that you're in, yes, spiritually. Mm-hmm. So you know, being transparent helped, and I have had countless and endless people say that's one thing I love about your ministry, the transparency, because it helps me to know yes. that somebody else is experiencing what I'm experiencing. Right. And the other side of that too is that you know God has dealt with me through my children, Mm -hmm. through my marriage, through other relationships Mm -hmm. about his grace. Come on. And, you know, when I want to hold a grudge or when I want Mm. to not be friendly or whatever the case may be or not like someone because of something they did, God says to me and quickly pulls me back in in line and say, look, my grace is sufficient. Oh, come on. For everybody. So we don't have the power to hate somebody or dislike somebody for something Mm. that they've done because God's grace is for all of us. Whether we think we deserve it or whether we think the other person deserves it, God's grace is sufficient. Oh, my gosh. Sherry, you said a mouthful. But you know the best part of what you said. You said, I don't want to do this unless I'm real. Unless I'm Unless I'm just being who I am. Yes. And that was what I had a hard time. Okay. I mean, because even as a little girl, I knew. I knew something was different about me. Mm-hmm. And it's not about me, but I have, to, I have right. to, I'm saying this for people to realize that even when you're young, if you're a teenager, young adult, even now, if you're 80 years old, God can use anybody to build his kingdom. But see, this is why I want to talk about this, okay. the spiritual awakening, the hard truths. Some of us, the enemy is out here like lurking, like he's lurking and he's coming in. And like my mom always said, the devil never changes clothes, but now he done took all his clothes off and he's just sneaking in all the rooms in our homes. And look, the enemy is not after our cars. He's not after our house. He's not after our careers. He's not after our jobs. You think he is, but he is definitely after our mentality. Our minds. So I want you to know what it means to go through a spiritual awakening. What does that mean to go through a spiritual awakening? Going through a spiritual awakening is one of the most confusing and alienating thing that you can go through. When you're going through things where God is showing you, but also the enemy tries to come in into your house and try to go into your mind into going into something that you don't need to like depression. Mm -hmm. Chronic anxiety is ridiculous right now. And a lot of people are turning to drugs, marijuana, suicide. I'm guilty of all of those things. Look, I'm not here to to portray I'm somebody that I'm not. If he can bring me out, said I got to use you in a clean way. God can only enter in your home unless that house is clean. And I've had to starve my addictions. And what I want you to understand, even though marijuana seems like it's going viral, basically all over the world, It's been an epidemic, but you got to understand, you got to think about that thing. If it's so legal now, 
Uh-huh. The government, I'm not going to talk about the government too bad, but think about why is it being legalized? Because now we've been awakened to eat better. Mm-hmm. And see, they want to still keep the people down. That's already down. And the enemy is wanting to come in and use that drug because it's something that they're putting something in. This is not something that I read. This is what God has given me. Right. The it's- people that are smoking on a daily basis, this is a message for you. I'm sorry if this is a little bit taboo. Sorry if it hurts your feelings, but this is why I'm here. I want you to identify you've got to starve those addictions that you're going through in your life Mm -hmm. because the enemy is using that to really drive you insane. You have to deny yourself. There you go. And the thing is, the enemy will use that uh, marijuana to, to... deceive the minds of the people and Come think it, it comes from the earth it's a plant it's no it's god made it so it's okay it's mm-hmm. okay but what people don't understand is that because it's a hallucinant Ooh. it triggers is it? something else and if you are already you may not even be aware that you have a mental disability there or there's go. something mental going on with you yes. but smoking awakens those disabilities. It actually awakens, let's get real, demonic spirits. Demonic spirits, Let's exactly. go ahead and get real. It, it, it awakens all of that. Come on. And, and, it, and, it, and it introduces you to a spirit world that you're not prepared for Ooh. because you have not received, if you haven't, some, right. some Christians still smoke. So, right. You know, but, but it definitely awakens your, your spirituality mm-hmm. to, to the spirit world. Yes. To where you are experiencing different things and right. you may not know how to combat mm-hmm. those things. So you succumb to the pressure of the drug or, right. you know, and, and like I said, it's been a big deception because, you know, people have said, well, drinking is worse than smoking. And I've been That's told that true. by several people, my son, my That's nephews, you know, that, that, that smoking is better for you, actually better for you than, mm. than drinking alcohol. But my question was, okay, in a world system, mm-hmm. smoking is illegal. Drinking isn't. So, okay. you know. Well, this is now, now I'm a little indifferent on that. And I'm okay. going to tell you why. Because I would use marijuana because marijuana has beneficial it has benefits to it. I'm okay. not going to well, lie. Yeah. I'm it's, talking it's, about it's as far medical. as factual, you need to use it medicinal ways. Right. Not right. something that's going to control your spirit. Anything that controls your spirit mm-hmm. is not of God. But, but how you many get what I'm know saying? that that's not what is, uh, is used for recreational Ooh. purposes more than it is used for it is. medicinal purposes. And, and, and you're right. And see, the reason why I bring that up, because I want us to awaken to what's going on around us as a land. Again, we're endangered species. What God is telling me that a lot of people are not seeing God anymore. God is not popular. We've just kind of gotten away from church. And look, when we go to church, it's all for a show or a community function Mm -hmm. or like eating together. And no, Mm -hmm. no, no, no. We need to get back to the foundation, back to the basics. And that's simply L-O-V-E, something that y'all don't like to do. Instead of having an attitude, even though your world may be upside down, you've got to decide that, look, today is my best day. Even if I don't got no money in the bank, even if if I'm in the red, I decide to be the light Mm -hmm. today. You get Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right, right. So people, if you're going through a spiritual awakening, and this is something that I can't give you, I can't teach you, this is something that you just have to experience for yourself. But Mm -hmm. if you're going through this, Spiritual awakenings are the soul's cry for freedom. Uh And listen to its call and your life will be transformed into something meaningful and significant. But I'm going to tell you, when you go through a spiritual awakening, it's very confusing. It's confusing. But that's why Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The foundation for all of our faith is believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. And asking him to come into our hearts and being the Lord of our life and surrendering to the leading and asking for the spirit of truth to infiltrate our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our spirits, and our souls so that we are led by the spirit and not we're not just out here operating out of the flesh. Because we know 
Ooh. that the flesh produces nothing but sin and you cannot follow God. You cannot serve God in the flesh. And that's where we falter at as a, as a people, as a church, as a whole, you cannot serve God in the flesh. And you know, I, I, I'm just a, na- I have a natural high, so I, I've never had to woo, use woo. marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I have. I'm, I ain't gonna lie. I, and it was good too, but I ain't gonna lie. We gotta let it go. I haven't been able. To, I have never used <laughs> marijuana. Now, um, but because I have a natural high. But see, right. because when you're rooted yes. and grounded Come in on. God and in His Word, yes, you don't you don't use worldly means to fix spiritual problems. And that's what we try to do. Self-medicate, try to self-counsel. We get ungodly counsel and we have not made a spiritual connection from our heart to God and from our minds to be transformed into the mind of Christ. Come so on. we're out here just living all kind of ways. We just doing living everything. our best lives. And what I've learned way. is yeah. that people don't want correction. People don't want to be corrected. They don't, there's not a spirit of humility that's in operation whether you in the church or out of the church the bible says that god he elevates those who are humble he gives grace to the humble but he brings down those who are proud and you cannot Mm -hmm. serve god out of that because pride causes you to think i'm right I'm Can't better. nobody tell me nothing. I'm going to do this my way. I, even if you do know it's wrong, I'm not going to admit that it's wrong because pride is there. Pride has set in and God hates pride. That's the one thing oh that he hates. And you hit the nail on the head. Love. We have to get back to love it's because a world without love <laughs> It's just a world of chaos. It's a world of darkness. And we have to learn how through love to forgive, through love to heal, through love to extend grace and show mercy to people. You know, my sin may not be your sin, but we all have sin. There are some things that we have did in our past and even now in our present and that we're going to do in our future. And the only way that you're not going to do wrong is if you, if you already gone to glory and that's contrary the that's to, the to what anybody may say the bible says to say you're without sin is to lie and the truth is not in you it's and that's true. why we have to pray for the spirit of truth to come, come into on. our hearts jesus promised that when he was getting ready to be crucified he told his disciples I'm going to send the sp- the spirit of truth is going to come. come and, on. And, and that's why you own this show. Because again, I didn't need somebody on here that thought they were mightier than thou, holier than thou. Because look, God can't no. use those. He passing right on by their doors. No. He said he's looking for a small church. I never understood that. Until the last couple of weeks, I said, God, what in the world does that mean? All these churches on this world, and you tell me you only going to use you, you a, know why? a few? Because people hide behind the mega church. Come. And we want to get in there, and we want to blend in, and we want to just be able to sit back and not be held accountable for our wrongdoing and for our sin. Now, right. you know the word teaches us the right. wages of sin it is, is death. death. Yes. But the gift of God is eternal, eternal life. life. Amen. And, and, you know... It, it baffles me sometimes to hear people try to make serving God a bad thing because Best God thing. is love. He he's is love. love. He's peace. And without, you know, sounding like the church of inclusion, because that's not what I am. Right. You know, but God loves us. He in does. spite of, in spite and he of. will meet us where we are right. if we repent if we, yes. and ask for forgiveness. Yes. And, 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 and repenting means to turn away, Come on. to make, to turn away from that thing that's causing you to, to err, to yes. sin, and to now, not be what God wants now, you to be. I got to stick you right there on the wall. I'm about to take my Spanx off. You're going to make me shout <laughs> up in here, honey. Listen, <laughs> y'all, y'all, I got chills because you said that thing about pride. Mm-hmm. Now, when God was showing me, and he was downloading so much stuff, oh, he was getting on my nerves. I ain't never heard God talk so much to me. I said, leave me alone, God. Let me go to sleep. You don't want him to leave you alone. Well, you know what I mean. I'm just all playing. But the one thing he downloaded in my spirit Mm. was pride. Mm -hmm. The world overall is so full of pride. So full of pride. Even you and I, we have been guilty of it. 
because God. people are so self indulged. Yeah. That we're not interested. And entitled. And entitled. And we're not interested in helping one another. We're not interested in like loving one another, even if it means dropping your pride. Right, right. Because if you only knew what God is about to do in mm-hmm. this land and what the enemy is about to do, mm-hmm. you better get on the right page. Well, you, you know, got to be on the right page because 2020 is some things coming down. It's, it's, about to it's, go down. it's some things coming. Yes. And the thing is about pride, what keeps me out of out of pride. Yes. Every morning when I wake, I ask God to forgive me of my sins. Yes. Before I close my eyes at night, I ask God to forgive me of my sins. Yes. You have so to. for me. I'm always in a state of repentance because we don't know throughout the day what we have done that has offended God or offended someone else. Yes. We don't know. And, and a lot of times people don't want to do this is a whole nother topic, but people don't would rather hate you and hold a grudge against you instead of coming to you saying, you know what? What you said or what you did really hurt me. And just talk and they don't about give it. you Squash an opportunity the bug. to. The bug. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. don't give you an opportunity to say, well, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Right. Or to give you a chance to say, you know, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And that's where we have to do better as, as believers. Right. And being able to go to someone, whether they receive it or not, once Come you on. give them that information, that's, it's off of Ooh. you and it's on them. And then when someone comes to you and say, will you forgive me? Quickly forgive. You have to. So we're going to go back and talk about the generation that is at hand. Young people are definitely on my heart mm-hmm. because this is a generation that just doesn't know don't know a lot of things. Right, right. Don't even know the motivational speakers. That's why a lot of people need to come on in and, and, mm-hmm. and claim who they are because a lot of us, the generation doesn't know the older generation. So it needs some people to step up and be brand ambassadors for God. I don't care how right. uncool that may sound, but we need him in this time, in well, this you period know, right um, now. And speaking of that, yeah, Kanye West was Ooh. here in the city this past weekend oh. and I watched <laughs> some of the, the service and I think what he is doing is really amazing. It's amazing. And 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 I've been asked, I've been getting phone calls, what do you think about Kanye West being at New Birth? Or yeah. He, I, my response is, I think it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Because, number one, what does Kanye West have to lose? And what does he have to gain? I mean, the man has been at the bottom. He's been rejected by his people. He, by the he, media. Yeah, All by the them. media. He's He's been at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And he's been at the top. So he's yes. experienced the best of both worlds. And yes. I don't know if you can call being at the bottom the best, but he's right. experienced that. And for him to say... I have experienced houses, money, cars, jewelry, all of that, but nothing takes the place of Jesus or your sanity. Oh wait. God is God is everything, is what he said. And that in that moment it moved me because this man has awakened. Yes, he's he has. awakened. Whoa. He has taken a stand for God. And I think it's beautiful because it's beautiful all he thing. is doing is glorifying God. Who can condemn him for glorifying God? Who can condemn him for giving his life to Christ? There you for go. Try, even, let, let me tell you, and this is what I said, even if by chance he is fake. Mm-hmm. Or not real with what he's doing, and that's what people, everybody's saying. I mean, that he's fake and he's not really real. But, but even if he is, mm-hmm. he's still glorifying God, yes, even in that, moment, in that moment. You know, we all are are just a, a step away from really losing it. You know, we 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 <laughs> have to train. pray on, every pass. day to be sane out here in this world. It's so many distractions and, it is. and so many things that can pull us in different ways. So for him to take this stance and be who he is, is a witness. Yes. It's a testimony. It's an example that young people can follow. And even, you know, cause they were saying, well, well, he's changing the secular songs, making them gospels. However you receive the message, however, God however is you it, awaken, is it, it's baby. okay. And, mm-hmm. and I want to share this scripture really quickly Okay, from Romans 13 and 11 and it says and do this knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed that's Romans 13 and 11 and then it says in Ephesians 5 Mm -hmm. and 13 but all things 
that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. And, you know, there's another scripture that's coming to mind that says, when we give our life to Christ, we become a new creation. Yes. We become a new creature. Even awakening from our, our slumber and from our, our dead state. Uh, Nicodemus asked Jesus by night when he, he snuck in and went to see yes, Jesus. Yes. He was like, you know, what must I do to be born again? Must I enter a second time into my mother's womb? Ooh. And Jesus said, no, you got to be born of the fire of the water. You got to be baptized. And so you're... What you're doing is igniting a fire because that's how we become awoke. There you we go. we feel the fire. Yes. And whether it's the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in us, yes. urging us to yes. come to God and give our life to Him, or if it's the fire from the world where we're going through so much hell, so much that hell. we, we burning that. in ourselves and in our flesh and yes. in our sin, we living in hell. One of the other fires is gonna awaken you. We're gonna go back to distraction. The distraction that we have here on the earth. I want you to understand that this is something that is actually outside of you that we're going through. Now, we call it in the church world spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a spiritual warfare with our mentality. The enemy is really trying to come in and really take that. We know that. But now we need to realize the world that we're living in Mm -hmm. and what we call the matrix. Mm. It is not... Look, look, when, you, when you're first spiritually awakened, it is confusing. I'm going to tell you, the last couple of weeks, God has been whooping my butt. Mm. He said, look, I need you. I need your time. I need you to focus. Forget social media. I need your, I need your eyes on me. Right. But right. when I did that, when I saw through God's eyes, oh, my gosh, I saw so many visions, y'all. And if you don't believe me, it's okay. It's for somebody that can hear it and take it and, and, and use it. But the thing about it is he downloaded so many things about what's real here on earth and what's going on right now, even with the Amazon being burned down. Right, right. Now, listen to me. If we don't understand where we're living in this, in this physical world, because not only was I spiritually awakened, that was mm-hmm. the last thing. You have to go mm-hmm. to the valley of the shadow of death first mm-hmm. before you are spiritually awakened and you have to be spiritually like physically awaken here on earth to see what's going on. And sometimes when you go through that, it's not an easy task. Right. Because when you start seeing the truth, I'm going to tell you what happened. The last couple of weeks, to make it short, he said, on this earth right now, social media, technology, especially our phones, Mm -hmm. data, it's like, it's like almost the Antichrist. And y'all, <laughs> listen to me. You think God is sitting up looking down low? No, boo. You got it all wrong. Mm. You got it all wrong. It is Satan who's looking down and looking low. Because he's the one that's building the towers up up in the air. Up, right. And you got this 5G <laughs> coming up in here. That's gonna. The scientists are even erupted. The scientists are like, whoa, why are we putting all this power out that's going to cause cancer? That's going to cause us anxiety? That's going to co- Wait. More anxiety. More. More, more, more. more. I'm but listen, we're not speaking bad things. I'm just speaking facts. Mm-hmm. This stuff is coming out. And there's really nothing that you can do but cover yourself in the blood of Jesus. And you've got to cover your families up. You, you have to. And, and, and yeah. more so than that, you have got to build a foundation in the spirit, in God, in Jesus. You have got to know You got to know them. And, you know, Ephesians, and I'm going to say this last one. one. Ephesians 23 says to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Because guess what? The the Bible teaches us also that the devil's playground is, is our mind. It's our mind. There's a war that's waged on Ooh, our minds. It's taking and John, t- John 10, 10 tells us Come that the thief cometh but to kill, steal, and to destroy. Girl, you better stop taking the words. <laughs> Girl, you- and then Jesus said in that same scripture, but I came that you will have life and have life more abundantly. Yes. So what the enemy presents to us as appealing can, does not compare mm. to the joy and the fulfillment that we get from having a, a relationship, yes. from having a life. Life in Christ. And and that's what that's why I try to be so transparent. Yeah. Is because I want people to see that, yeah, you I'm saved. 
I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Right. But I also can relate to you because I'm not living in a box. See, this is the thing. He's sitting here, and I had somebody that was young. She's 16, talked to me about she was just sitting in her bed, and she was just on her phone. And all of a sudden, she said she was happy. I mean, the day was going well. All of a sudden, the enemy just came in on her. Mm -hmm. And she said, I just felt numb. And the next couple of days, I don't know what I was feeling. Then I had another person. She said, all of a sudden, she was driving. Listen. And the enemy told her to run like off her the car. road. And she's a happy person. Now, I know who this is. When the enemy is attacking Ooh. eight-year-old children and causing Come them on. to commit suicide, we're left and right. the, the left suicidal and right. rape. It's so hard. In our young people from 8 to 13, 15, 16, it's, for, it's, it's at an all-time high. And why? But because why? we're why? sleeping. Uh -uh. We're sleeping. We're sleeping too now. But we've got to understand the matrix. The matrix is the realization of what's going on in this three-dimensional world. Mm -hmm. This earthly world. Not mm -hmm. spiritual, but the earthly world. We're on a three-dimension. And basically... From politics, economics, oh, yes. Most um, even religion is one of the biggest tricks mm -hmm. of the devil, honestly, because mm -hmm. it's man-made. But God is not man-made. God is not. Jesus is not man-made. Even even God had to remind Listen, me in the last couple of days, why I don't, tell don't people, you It dare. ain't about religion. Get it it's twisted. about relationship. Come, come on, it's about it. intimacy. We got to figure out how to become one with our people. Yes. Nobody is higher than you. Yes. Nobody is lower than you. No big guys Everybody and is equal to yes. you. I don't care. I told you. I don't care how nasty people are. I don't care how right, mean they right. are. We've got to love people but angels, for who they are and, and the not way, where they are. Right. And the way, the personality that we have. Come on. We can overlook a lot of things. Yes. And we do overlook a lot of things. We do. Because, you know, sometimes our feelings get hurt. Sometimes, yeah. you know, we're crushed yeah. and, and bruised. Our feelings sensitive, are bruised yeah. and, and become sensitive. Yeah. But we know how to quickly pull ourselves up from the Come trenches on. and get back to, okay, God, I, I, I'm, I forgive him. I let that go. And we talk about it and talk through it and we move on. But everybody has not learned and matured to that level of, where they can forgive or where they cannot be affected by what, what someone else says or what someone else does. And, you know, you're talking about this generation and we know that bullying and peer influence is the and heart. Social media. Social media. It's the biggest and, one. And, and, and just the internet, yeah. TV, television, uh, media, all forms of media. Yeah, they're comparing definitely. themselves to others. To other people. And y'all, and no, please don't. This is a fake world. They're mm -hmm. putting this out for your money. They want you to buy. They want you to buy into the market. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled by the enemy's tricks. And how tricks. many times do we, do we... This is not your world. Don't get, don't get caught up, right. y'all. They say it's fake. Okay, if you're doing a good deed, if you're putting out positive things, please use it for that. Mm -hmm. But do not... Do not let social media tear you down to the point right. where you don't think that you're enough. You're not good, good enough. enough. You, you don't ain't look pretty good enough. enough. You yes. ain't handsome enough. And they'll Listen, body shame you. you and, all of that. Uh, yes. Listen, yes. don't let these people fool you because it's out there. They have created this world for you to buy into it. And why you ever, Why do you think everybody's popping up writing books, but see, doing that, this, doing that? that? Because that it's a back, show, y'all. It gets it's a back show. to the word and it gets back to, yes. you know, God. Man looks at the outside appearance, mm -hmm. judges us for our outside appearance, but God looks at the heart. And if you right. don't know these scriptures, if you haven't been taught, then Come and you on. don't know how to use the word to your defense, you do get caught up. You get caught and up. And trying to uh, fit into a mode or an image. For now, we're almost out of time. I have to say okay. this before we get off. When I was awakened, mm -hmm. this is why we're here. Again, I had to go through the valley of shadow of death first. Mm -hmm. God showed me when I woke up. Physically on earth, that's a physical term, not spiritually. I went physical first. He allowed me to awaken to so many truths on this earth. That's what's going on through mankind. And also the enemy is a, it's team tag mm -hmm. with some secret societies that's out there oh, yeah. that's, that's really trying to get our souls. Yes. The whole point is, it's like bad and good. But well, they want you but to see this is the soul. thing. God showed me so much at one time that mm. I totally didn't feel like I was real. My God. I felt like I was, we have one minute. Listen, I want you guys to not get caught up. When you're awakened, when he awakens you, that means simply 
That means simply that you are being called, but don't turn your face away from God because the enemy is trying to wake you up physically and he's going to turn you away. He's even going to wake up the people that are all in with God. Mm -hmm. He's going to make them see so many things physically that it's going to make them think that God is not real, that Jesus is not real. But I'm here to tell you and question it. Do not question it, y'all. I want you to stay steadfast, and I want you guys to stay in your word, and I want you to learn love all over again, because if you can get to that, you'll be good. Thank you, guys. I'll catch you next week. It's over. Thank you, Sheriff, for being here. I love you, girl. All right, it's getting real hot up in here. I'm fired up. Strike, we lie.